Hi there, I'm Dave Dowling uh, with Ball Color Link Sales Rep, specialized in cut flowers. And we're going to talk about cut flower perennials and which ones you should be growing on your farm. Um, so what we're going to talk about here is cut flower perennials. Basically, we're going to go down this list and just talk about these. I think there's 10 or 12 or maybe 15 on here. These are perennials that I think you should grow. And like I said, the top start at the top on the top of the page, start at the top and work your way down. What's number one on there? Peonies, because everybody should be growing peonies. Um, if you're not growing peonies, you still have time to order them. You need to order them by August 15th. Is it, uh, Edney's deadline, which you order through ball. There's still have lots of peonies available. You plant a three to five eye peony this fall. You're not gonna pick anything next year, the year 2023. But 2024, you can pick those flowers as long as you're leaving lots of leaves on the plant. If it only has two stems or two flowers, don't cut those, then you're gonna hurt the plant. But as long as you're leaving lots of leaves on the plant, cut the stem a little short and still leave that stump with two leaves on it, you can pick them the second year from a three to five eye. If you plant in two to three eye, you're gonna have to wait another year later. The two to three eye is usually a dollar or two dollars less per plant. To me, it's worth paying that extra two dollars a plant because you're making money back a year sooner on your investment. But definitely you wanna grow peonies. Do you the first year, not so much cutting the bud, but don't let them make seeds. So if you, in other words, it's a good idea to let them bloom that first year, just so you know you got the right variety, because there are mistakes made, whether it's in the field growing them or labeling or yeah, wherever. Like yeah, it, it can happen. Um, let them bloom to make sure you know what you got the right thing that you ordered. But you can let it bloom. If you want to cut a little four inch stem and put it in a juice glass on your kitchen counter for yourself, go ahead and do it. But leave all the leaves on the plant and don't let it make seed heads. Right? That's a whole nother talk about peonies, put up the name main stem with a big flower and then use the three or four side buds. You can disbud, which means you take those off and they're about the size of a pea, just twist them with your finger and get rid of them. The big bud should get bigger and you have one flower on one stem. If you sell them to a wholesaler, that's the only way they will buy them. They will not buy them with the side buds. I left, like to leave the side buds on it because it filled out the vase. I sold at farmer's markets and the few florists that I bought to were fine with it. Um, a wholesaler would never buy it like that. Um, so that's up to you whether you want to do it. Is, you know, it's a day of going out and taking all the buds off. And, you know, if you've got 50 plants or if you've got 500, it can be a lot of work. So definitely going to do peonies. I've listed a few varieties here to definitely grow. Sarah Bernhardt is the number one peony. That's it right there starting to open. It gets a big fat bud. If you've ever been to Whole Foods in the spring, they got Sarah Bernhardt's in. The buds are as big as a baseball sometimes right before they pop open. Um, you should go twice as many Sarah Bernhardt as any other, pe any other peony, peony variety. So if you've got 50 Coral Charm, you want 100 Sarah Bernhardt because you're going to need twice as many Sarah Bernhardt as any other variety. And it's also one of the cheapest ones. It's still under around $5 a plant for the 3 to 5 I. So it's affordable to buy a bunch of them. But it is definitely the number one money-making perennial. Um, there are farms that do nothing but peonies. There's a grower in, I can't remember, he's Western North Carolina. He has his own tractor trailers with his name on it, and all he grows is peonies. It's crazy for those two and a half weeks when he's picking in the spring, over 100 people picking, but he has the same people come back every year because it's just quick cash. I don't know if he pays cash, but quick money for them in the spring. They paid so much per stem to pick. They come back every year and spend that three, two and a half weeks picking peonies, and literally tractor trail loads of peonies he ships up and down the East Coast. Baptisia, I was talking earlier about Baptisia. Great perennial, blooms with the peonies. Um, originally there was just the blue one there on the right. Now there's all these other colors. The top, the one on the left there is called Twilight Prairie Blues. There's a, um, the yellow one, I'm not sure if that's, there's one called Screaming Yellow and another yellow. Lemon, um, meringue. lemon meringue maybe. There's what it is, again, it's the different companies making them. You've got proven winners, then you might have Walters Gardens or some other uh, Syngenta making them, some other company doing the breeding and they come up with the same finished product, a little bit different. Um, but Baptiste is a great plant because you got the flowers that bloom around mother's, uh, around peony time. Then you got the seed pods that get like a little big, big green fat, fuzzy, like a big soybean almost, that they'll use those. Then they dry and turn black and act on like a rattle later in the year. Plus you use the leaves all year as a green. So it's a multi-plant, multi-purpose plant, almost impossible to kill it. It's almost, also almost impossible to move it after it's established. When I closed my farm, I let people have them if they could dig them. One plant out of a couple hundred got dug. They could not dig them because it's such a solid mass of roots, you can't dig them up. Um, and they get to be, like that yellow is probably all one plant. You'll have, 
100 stems on one plant. So you plant them about two feet apart and they just get huge. And this is also one that's great for growing in landscape fabric because it stays as a, as a clump. It doesn't spread by runners. It just all comes from the center. You might need to make the hole a little bit bigger every couple years, but it keeps the weeds out of the bed. And we all know weeds are the most expensive thing on your farm. You spend more money getting rid of weeds and controlling weeds than maybe unless you have a bunch of employees, but then you're paying the employees to get rid of the weeds. Uh, but Baptiste, definitely is something you should be growing. And those are available, um, like I said, proven winners. So they're available to order through ball from uh, Walter's Garden. And then also some of the other uh, Creek Hill, Get Group, they also have a few of the varieties. They almost all have the traditional blue that's called Australis. For the newer varieties, each grower has a couple of them, but Walter's Gardens has all of the, uh, the new varieties. Um, Achillea or Yarrow, again, early summer blooming, especially the yellow one. This is Coronation Gold. It's another yellow one called Moonshine. Moonshine. It says right on there, Moonshine. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Um, Moonshine. No, Moonshine's not as hard looking when it dries, when it gets old. This is the flower's getting old there. It's getting really firm. The moonshine is not quite as firm looking. The, the yellow ones, you can actually dry really easy. Just hang them upside down. The stems get as thick as a, a piece of straw, really sturdy. The color ones on the left, those don't dry well. They just get ugly and brown. Um, and these also bloom a little bit later. The, the colored ones bloom more in June, whereas these are late May, early June. The yellow ones are grown only from rooted cuttings. You don't grow seeds. The ones on the left are, you can buy seed. The seeds like pepper dust, really small. Like a thousand seeds doesn't even halfway fill a thimble. So it's, you know, seeds teeny. You can also order plugs for them. And those, if you start seeds this, in the spring, you have flowers the same year. Gold. Cloth of gold is a yellow, but it's still not as stiff and sturdy as these so stems. Yeah, this is much better. Especially if you're drying, if you're really dr growing for real dried flowers, those are amazing for drying. Because they stay that color and the stem is stiff as a, as a pencil. Really stiff. So what is the name of that one? Coronation Gold or Moonshine, but this is Coronation Gold there. But definitely grow the, the yarrow. And those can be planted. A lot of these perennials, you can still plant them this time of the year in late summer and early fall. And if you plant the plant now, some of these yarrow would still grow and bloom a short this year, 12 or 15 inches. But next spring, it's a full size plant, 30 inches tall. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like you don't have to wait till next spring because if you plant new perennials in the spring, they're not going to be as big as if you plant them this fall. This is one of the ones, um, Lismachia clethroides, um, gooseneck loose strife is easier to remember. It's a perennial that's a spreading clump. You plant it here, it's going to creep out and get bigger. It doesn't spread by seeds, it only spreads by the root spreading. So I like to leave it someplace where you're either going to till or mow next to it because it's going to spread. Um, blooms this time of the year around here. Where I was down in Maryland, it's more like mid-June. Great filler for bouquets. Like this time of the year, if you're making mixed bouquets, whether it's a grocery store or a farmer's market, you put six of these in, the, in your hand and put other flowers around it, your bouquet is done. Because it's got the greens for the filler plus the white flower on the top. Then the leaves turn red, orange, and yellow in the fall, and you can use them as a filler again in the fall. Just know that as soon as you have that first freeze, they're brown and crunchy. So you use them when it's cool, but not freezing yet. But only two people offer it. Get Group does a plugs or liners. And also they do a pot, which is a two and a half inch pot. And then Edney sells it as a bare root shipped in the spring. Get Group has plants available now, and we'll have them again in the spring. But if you plant those now, you'll be picking flowers off of next summer. Macnathema muticum, mountain mint. Um, mountain mint is a common name, but you got to make sure the best one is muticum. It just has a better leaf. Even though you see the little brown on the flowers there, you give it a shake or rub it with your hand, that comes right off. And most florists don't care about that. If you took to the farmer's market, people will still buy it. It smells minty. We have a whole bucket of it out in the cart. If you haven't been out to the cart yet, go out to see it. Um, almost like a mild peppermint, great filler. Um, like the gooseneck loose strife, it's a, in the mint family, it has square stems. It spreads, creeps a little bit. So again, keep it in place where you can keep it contained. But if you're growing cut flowers, there is no such thing as an invasive plant that gets too big and too many. That just means you have more money to make off of it, more stems to pick and sell. But definitely a great filler. Um, sedum. This is Autumn Joy, to show what it looks like green and what it looks like in flower. And it even gets later, it starts to dry, it's still good. Which just reminds me later on, there's a slide on here I didn't, I was supposed to add pictures from the garden and it just says add pictures and I didn't add them. 
but I went out and took a picture of the seed out in the garden in here. If you go out of here and go like at seven o'clock and walk way as far as you can walk past where you think you're leaving the property, there's a whole bunch of perennials out there. And there's some that are, there's some flocks out there that's kind of in the back of a bed that's tall. Um, there's the sedum there, quite a few different perennials there that are growing that you could see them in, in person. But the great thing about this autumn joy is you could be picking that two weeks ago in mid-July and you're still picking off the same plants since late September. So that's one that when I say for the last talk, plant more, plant a lot more of this. You know, plant 25 plants, plant 200 of them. Because the other thing they do is sometimes the flower heads, if you look on the right, the flower heads are really big, but you can see the smaller ones down low. So the smaller ones you use in mixed bouquets and the big ones are more like a focal flower. And then the smaller ones are more of a filler. But a great plant to grow. Polygonatum or Solomon seal. This is another one I talked earlier about that 30 to 40% of what florists buy are not flowers. It's the greens and fillers. If you think you own the flower shop, they got eucalyptus, they got the, that leathery fern from Florida. From you, they would buy Solomon seal. They'll buy eucalyptus, they'll buy the mountain mint. Um, but this is polygonatum, Solomon seal. The one on the right is variegated. The one on the left is plain green. See a little flower hanging on there? That's not what you want. You want just the green leaves. So you can wait till those flowers are dead and fall off. They dry up and just kind of disappear. Um, this does grow in shade. It's not a full sun plant. It doesn't mind dry shade. So it can be under a, a, a tree and it's fine. Um, another great place to have shade in your farm is along the, the north side of a barn or a building. Use that plant. It'll still be another shade loving plants there. Good thing about this, you start harvesting it usually in late June when the flowers are finished. It just sits there all summer. Unless you have some, it's rare that a bug bothers, but it just sits there all summer. So you can pick on it lightly all summer. You don't want to clear cut it and get rid of all of it because you'll kill it off. But then once it gets to mid-September, when the year's almost over, then you go and cut every one because it's regenerated the root for next year. You're not going to hurt it by selling every single stem. So by the end of the season, you're going to start picking sometime in late June. By late September, you've sold every stem from there. And if you can see how many stems are there, it gets to the point where here you got three or 400 stems in a four foot circle. And it does spread by rhizomes a little bit, not invasive, but it does spread and get a bigger clump. Um, the oh, men, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Walter's Gardens has some that are 12 inches. So whenever you're buying any perennial for cut flowers, definitely look at the height, because unfortunately all the new breeding is the shorter they can get it, the better it is for them, because they want little short stuff for the little city gardens especially like flocks, there's flocks that then are Monarda that's 12 inches tall. Make sure you get the tall ones. The variegated is table height. There's one called Giganium is even taller. But I, I put the name on there, I think Giganium and variegate, Variegatum. Um, but great plant, but that florist in Baltimore, um, Ellen Frost, the local color flowers, are only buys locally grown flowers, has never bought an imported flower or a flower from California. Florist in business, 12 months out of the year out of Baltimore. This is her favorite green her favorite plant, as soon as it's available, she buys it and buys it by hundreds of dollars worth a week as long as it's available until the end of the season. So it's definitely something to sell to you for us because it's tall enough to go in that big, tall, like the hotel lobby kind of arrangement. This is Campanula superba glomerata. It's just also called clustered bellflower. Blooms in June, we usually probably around here, second or third week of June. You can see how tall it gets over here. It's maybe 24 inches tall. Comes in a purpley blue color and also a light lavender, and there's also a white too. Um, great, because it blooms right after peonies, kind of that time where you don't have a lot of stuff yet. Really good for mixed bouquet. The flower itself is maybe about the size of a golf ball. You put all those little flowers together, that little cluster at the top. And again, it spreads slowly by rhizomes. It doesn't reseed across the field, but it just spreads and gets a bigger patch. And the bigger the patch gets, the more you can grow, or more you can sell. Flocks. <clears throat> I'd like to think they named it after me, but they didn't. It's been around longer than me. Um, David is a really tall white one, sometimes five feet tall. And the David's Lavender, there's a nursery in Maryland that found that in their patch of David one year. And they were smart. They got it patented and they've made a fortune off of it because they discovered this new variety of flocks just happened naturally. And they reproduced it. It's, it's stable. It stays that color. It doesn't revert back to the white. And so they got the patent on it and they got to make all the money on it. But those are two varieties work great as cut flowers, both are mildew resistant. There are some flocks out in the garden out here. There's the, the Kapow, K-A-P-O-W series. Those are the tall ones get to be 30 inches tall, not the little short ones. Um, but flocks is great. The trick with that is these are both too old to pick for, to use. You want to pick it when just a couple of the little florets are open and then they'll open up in the vase. 
And then if you do have them where they're too open, you just give them a shake and brush off the loose ones because you can see there's lots of other little buds inside that are going to open. So even though it might shed a little bit throughout the week, it still lasts well over a week. It also has a great scent. If you go out in the perennial garden, go and lean over and smell them. It's a really sweet uh, floral scent. And then another nice thing about these is they will over will re bloom again in the fall if when you pick it, you leave like a six inch stump. It'll branch off from the leaves and gives you flowers again in late September. Uh, Monarda or bee balm. Um, they have it out here in the perennial garden, but they cut it all back. So it probably had powdery mildew real bad or something. Or it's finished blooming because it blooms in early July, which is nice. If you see the Jacob Klein, it's a bright red um, fireworks looking, and it blooms at 4th of July. So you can't beat that for a 4th of July flower to sell. Um, being a Menard, it does spread and creep a little bit. It's not invasive. It just gets to be a bigger clump. They're, the Jacob Klein is tall, four feet tall. Um, great flower. You pick it when they're just starting to open. And you also see the little calyx on the bottom. We've got the, the pinkish color, the reddish, that also just adds to the, to the interest of the flower. There's one called raspberry wine. That's a kind of a, the raspberry color. Um, something great if you're making mixed bouquets. It is called bee balm. Bumblebees are going to be all over. Honeybees. They want the flower. Go ahead and pick the flowers. Unless you grab with your hand, they're not going to bother you. But great in mixed bouquets. And they also have a kind of herbally scent. It's, it's not flower, it's just plant scent that smells good. When it's blue plant for it? Fourth of July, early July. That's why I said the red is perfect because it's like fireworks in a red, white, and blue arrangement or any arrangement then. Then a stilby. This is a printing a lot of people don't think about growing. Definitely much better in the shade. Um, I know some people have grown it in the sun. It just struggles because you can keep it watered enough. I'm um, like we're saying on the north side of your barn, the north side of a fence along the tree line to give it shade. Or if you don't have shade, you can always build a shade structure, which you need to build like a high tunnel and just put shade cloth on it, no plastic. Or you have posts on the corners, cable on the top, and just shade cloth on, on top of that to give you plants shade. Um, the one on the left is Bridal Veil. That can go over three feet tall. Um, the right is yeah, amethyst. That's, I think that might be amethyst. But if, if you look at a, a still be any one that's over 24 inches, it's fine to grow as a cut flower. It's not anyone that's going to be good or bad. As long as they're at least 24 inches, you're fine. The other thing with these, when you pick them, you're picking, it's a stem, a flower, and maybe one little leaf on it. So you can pick every flower, and it's not going to hurt the plant. So you never want to leave anything behind. You pick them when they're about half open. These on the right are a little too far. Um, you want it to still be about half buds at the top and flowers in the bottom half. This is Echinops or Globe Thistle. Um, the plants look prickly, but they're not. Um, it's not like a, a sticker bush that's going to get you. Bees do like it. Um, usually you would pick it just as it's starting to open. The one on the left of the bees is a little bit past what you want. It's just that neat steel blue color, and it's a late, mid to late July bloomer. It can reseed if you don't pick all the flowers, but if you're in the business of selling cut flowers, I hope you picked all the flowers and sold them. Don't let them go to seed. You can start these from seed, but they won't bloom till the second year. It's a second year blooming perennial. Or you can buy plugs. If they're vernalized plugs, which are the ones that have been started last year, given a cold winter period, you plant them in the spring, they'll bloom the first year. Joe pie weed or Eupatorium. Um, I don't know if that grows wild up here around the streams and stuff. Yeah, but that's a one that's like six, seven, eight feet tall. That's not what you want. You want, I didn't put the name, Little Joe. It's on the, on the paper, Little Joe. Um, grows to be three and a half, four feet tall. Great plant. You want to harvest it when it's still in bud stage, like on the left. The one on the right is just a pretty picture with the butterfly on it. Um, the other thing with these is if you wait till the plants are about eight inches tall and pinch them, they'll branch out and you get much more manageable stems. If you let it grow like that, if you see the one's picture on the left, you pick that you have so many side shoots that aren't tall enough to use for anything. But if you had pinched that, all the side shoots would have grown taller and you would have had eight or ten tall stems as opposed to one big one and all the little side shoots that are no good. Arimaris. This is common name as foxtail lily. Um, you plant it in the fall. Sometimes you can find it in the spring. Um, Edney offers it in the fall. I don't know if any other supplier or ball offers them even, but Edney has them in the fall. This picture on the right was actually from my farm. Those plants were only about four years old there. Um, they're maybe four feet tall, sometimes five feet tall. The nice thing about them is if you look at the one on the left, the bottom flower is starting to maybe look a little old. Just pull them off and the rest of the thing's fine. Kind of like if you see a gladiola, you've got one bad flower in the bottom, pick it off and nobody's going to miss it. These are the same way. Um, 
very long lasting, sometimes two weeks in the vase. It's not something that ships well for two reasons. It's geotropic, which means if they lay it in a box, the ends are going to curl. Plus, you put them in a box, they get smushed, and they don't always come unsmushed very well. It's kind of like delphinium. They don't, well, they don't travel well in a box. So if you grow these locally, and you have florists that do big events, like they're doing the wedding with the big church pieces or hotel pieces, they'll buy these every year from you because they know it's that statement flower for that big arrangement they need to make, where they're making this $400 arrangement for the hotel lobby of the, the Hyatt. To the florist, probably 2 or $3 a stem. Yeah. And a, at a farmer's market to a customer, maybe $5. And the other thing is, it's hard to see there, but if you look in the picture on the right, there's some that are much smaller. Um, they're kind of like a peony. The first year you plant them, it takes a couple years to get established. Then you get the big flowers. But they're always putting out some smaller side shoots that are more bouquet size. They might sell for a dollar or a dollar fifty that are fit in a bouquet, not necessarily the big, huge hotel arrangement. But it's definitely something to grow. What do you have done for weed control? That was actually just bare soil that we put down shreds of leaves on. You, I do know people have grown it in landscape fabric, and it keeps the weeds out. Um, this is also a big root. So if you are using chemical weed prevention, it would work for it. Um, you know, something like the treff lamb, which is preen, uh -huh. that you put down in the spring before the weeds sprout. It would keep the seeds in front of it. It would not affect the plant because the big tuberous root. If you ever planted asparagus, it's like that big fingers of roots with eyes coming up the middle. But a great plant to go and Definitely a conversation starter if you have a buck of the farmer's market. I always like to tell the story. At, I was at the DuPont Circle Market in DC, had a bucket of these two women are, are digging through, picking out the ones they want because they sold everything by the stem. They stand up and look at each other and they were neighbors in Europe. Both moved to DC, didn't know they'd moved to DC. Wow. And they used to be neighbors in Europe years ago. So small world. <laughs> Seven dollars to stem to the florist. For the big tall ones. For the big tall ones, like uh, that big one, so yeah. We get small ones, then we'll put them in like three for about the same price. Right. Yeah, that's something you do when you're selling to florists is still keep your price like you had $7 for the big one or $7 for three small ones. As long as you let the florist know that today you're getting three small ones for that price. Same like with the Winterberry Holly in the earlier talk. You can have that one big stem for five bucks or two smaller ones for five. You just got to make sure the florist knows they're getting, you, you would call them small or juniors or whatever you want to call them. You probably, if you give something a cute name, it always helps. You know, <laughs> like don't call them the side shoots, call them the Aramaris Jr. or Aramaris or Petite Aramaris. Give them a, a cute name and it helps sell the stuff. But definitely I recommend selling this. Winter hardy to zone five, important is good winter drainage. Um, it's hard to see here, but these were raised beds a good 12 inches or maybe eight inches high. The trick with planting them, because they're such big like the asparagus, prep your bed, lay them in the soil, and then add two, two inches of soil on top of them. So you don't have to dig that hole that's that big around. Prep your bed and add more soil that makes the bed even higher, and you didn't have to try and get all those little legs and feet in there with the fingers. And that gets the bed raised a little bit higher. And you see it had drip tape on there, but rarely ever had to use the drip tape. Because like a daffodil, they bloom first part of June. End of June, the plants are dead. They're gone, dormant. So you don't have to water them all summer. They just sit there. That's when you keep the weeds out. One trick for keeping weeds out of a bed like this, or if you have daffodils that die down completely, once it died back naturally and everything's dead, put a piece of landscape fabric over it. Just take it off in November. Kills the weeds all summer, you take up in November, they still get the cold winter, and you're good to go. It's, it's kept the weeds out all summer. Even after you had to cut? To, after One, you cut you've cut the flowers, the leaves are died. The leaves are going to die three or four weeks after oh, you pick it. Okay. This isn't like a phlox that stays so, green all year. Yeah. It's like a daffodil, they die back. Mm -hmm. Then you, or an allium does the same, it dies back. Put landscape fabric over it, take it up in the fall. The trick is if you put in landscape fabric, you got to make sure you don't have voles, because voles will get in there and it's like a smorgasbord, you just give them a place to eat. So you gotta make sure you have some hungry cats on your farm to keep, out, to keep the voles in away. But definitely think about growing the foxtail lilies. Um, Agastache or a hyssop. Um, a lot of people don't think of this as a cut flower, but it's kind of this filler, but it also has a really cool licorice scent to the foliage. There is some of it growing out here. Just lean over and scratch and sniff it and just you'll smell it. It's just a neat flower to, or plant to put in. You can use just the green foliage or wait till it blooms. It's blooming this time of the year, mid to late summer. And it's kind of that dusty, muted blue color. It's not a bright color, but it works. And just so you know that, in the background there's some limelight hydrangea, um, amazing hydrangea plant. It's blooms in late July, early August. But that's not when you want to pick it. Wait till September, it starts turning pink and green. It's papery feeling. They last forever, and your customer is much happier. You pick them white and fleshy in August, they might last three days, and they go bad, and that's, that's not good for business. And then... Um, platycodon or balloon flower. 
Um, it's called balloon flower, so you can see in the upper, right, upper left picture, the flower before it opens is a big puffy balloon. That'll turn really blue and then it pops open, a little five star, five pointed star shaped flower. Late summer bloomer, blooms around now, into August, in August. Um, it's also when the last perennials come up in the spring. I've known people who thought it was dead and tilled up and then it wasn't dead, it just hadn't come up yet. Whereas most of your other perennials are up, you know, around your last frost date, this isn't up for another couple weeks later. It's really late to break dormancy in the spring. Um, lasts all week, long lasting, looks fragile, but it's not. And comes in blue, pink, and white. Make sure you get the variety called Fuji, which is tall, like Mount Fuji, it's tall. There are new ones, again, the plant breeding, and you're lucky if they're four inches tall. You know, they look the same in the seed packet, they look the same with the little baby plug, but they only grow to be f four inches tall. So make sure you get the tall varieties. Um, they do have a, a milky sap, almost like a poinsettia sap. Um, I never had a problem with it. Sometimes that milky sap, whether it's on this or sleppiest, can give you a rash on your arms, where if you get your eye, it's not good usually, so be careful of that. But I never had a problem with it. And then this is where I was supposed to go out in the garden, tell you to go down there to look at the plants, and I was supposed to tell you that there. But those are out the blooming. You got Floxy, the Echinaceas, the Machili out there. The Echinaceas out in the garden, some of them are amazing colors. It's like, I don't know if they have the one called tomato soup, but it's like bright red, bright orange. Just the colors are nothing like the old um, purple cone flower of 20 years ago that was kind of drab and just boring. The colors now are amazing. And 15 years ago, they came out with a bunch of these new colors, but they weren't tough plants. I think they released them too soon. They weren't winter hardy. Um, the ones now, they're winter hardy. If you go to the established perennial garden, you see the ones that have been there for sometimes two or three years. I think on the label, it tells you the year they were planted. And you see that's been there for three years in Chicago. It can take the winter. Um, then here's some cut flower resources, everybody, if you want to look at these. Um, the Association of Special Cut Flower Growers is a cut flower organization, mainly in North America, U.S. and Canada, but has members around the U.S. It's a great organization to learn what you're doing. I know when I joined it 25 years ago, I went from here to here in one year just because you went to a conference and found all these new things you could grow and stuff like that. Um, it has a magazine, comes out quarterly, a great online stuff, a online Facebook group, online, all their, all their past conferences are recorded, you can watch them online. Um, a great thing to, to, to join. Um, Ball Seed has a cut flower web page, so if you go to ballseed.com backslash cut flowers, they started that last, last December, not quite a year ago. I know right after it was started, it was their second most visited web page on their website, which I was kind of proud of that. Um, I hope it still is. I haven't checked lately. It is still good. Good. Um, but it's a place where you put all the cut flower info, cut flower catalogs, whether it's an Edney Lilly catalog, a cut flower brochure from Cicada or the seed companies of just a cut flower products. You're not going to go there and see petunias and impatiens. It's nothing but cut flowers. How do I get a hold of them books? If, if actually, somewhere here, they should be able to find books. Out here? Out here. If you want the actual paper cups, most of them there are paper copies. Some there's not paper. It's just online only. But if they're paper ones, they have them here somewhere. I don't know where. Do they come in the mail if I sign up for it? Or you have to ask for them individually. They don't just send them automatically. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but if you can go to that website, it's got lots of great information. There's also on there where you can sign up for my cut flower email list where I send an email out a couple times a month. Sometimes just reminding you it's time to order this. If you want it, order your peonies now because the deadline's two weeks from now. Um, sometimes I just sent one out talking about cabbage worms on cut flower kale. So it's not always trying to sell you something, it's just also information. We have some in our hard copy catalog. Yeah, so right. I don't, on the table out here. I wasn't sure where they were. Yeah, they're right, at the, right yeah. there on the table. Out on your left. Right. Um, the Gardener's Workshop is an online website. Lots of free information. She does every Wednesday, 11.30, a free Ask the Farmer on Instagram. Just whatever you want to ask her. And I'm doing it for her next week. She's on vacation, so I'm next Thursday, next Wednesday, 11.30, to be me. And this is Eastern time, so 10.30 Central time. Um, lots of free information on her website, plus she also has online classes you can take if you want to do that. Um, Growing for Market is a monthly newsletter. It's only 11 months a year. I think they take December off. Growingformarket.com, you can either get the printed one. It's geared to a lot of vegetable growing for growing for market, like selling at farmer's markets, but there's always a column in there for cut flowers. Currently, it's Stephen Gretel from Sunny Meadows Farm who's writing the column. Um, Bloom, Be Bloom Beat e-newsletter, that's a new newsletter started about three months ago by um, Grower Talks, which is a ball company here. 
Um, you can sign up for that at growertalks.com newsletters. And then I have my Cutflower email list, which if you go to the Cutflower website at ballc.com, Cutflowers, you can sign up for that, and that's my email list. Some books you definitely want to read. If you haven't read The Flower Farmer by Lynn Bozinski, she is retired now, but she started the uh, Growing for Market magazine, but then she sold it because she wanted to retire. She's old, <laughs> older now. She's retirement age. Um, but her, far her book is Growing Flowers, everything from starting the seed, what to grow, how to grow it, and it's on the organic principles. So if you don't have to do organic, but the book is written for organic growing. And then she also wrote a book called The Hoop House Handbook, which is all about growing cut flowers in hoop houses. Um, both of those are available from Growing for Market, and I'm pretty sure the ASCFG also sells both of those books. There's a really big, thick, almost like encyclopedia book called Especially Cut Flowers by Alan Armitage and also Judy Lauschman at the Association of Cut Flowers helped with that one, the new edition. It's lots of information, not a lot of pictures. So if you're a book reader, it's great, but it's really detailed. It tells you what variety to grow, when to plant it, how fertilizer, all that kind of stuff. And then there's another book called Woody Cut Stems. Um, earlier I talked in the last talk about the woody stems, like hydrangeas and things like that. It's a book that's done by Lane Greer and John Dole, but it's now published by the ASCFG because the original publisher didn't want to publish it anymore. You can find it on Amazon for a couple hundred dollars, but ASCFG is selling for about 60 and they print on demand. But it's a real thick book. If you want to grow any woody shrubs as a cut stem, you should have that book. Then there's one other book I didn't put on this called Post Harvest Care and Handling of Fresh Cuts, Flowers, and Greens. Again, it's a book from the ASCFG. It's, a, again, an encyclopedic kind of book. It has a picture of every flower you can imagine, when to pick it, and how to take care of it after you harvest, whether it needs to be in a cooler, flower food, strip the stems, whatever you do to take care of it. Another great book to have. I, I will, I'm happy to answer your cut flower questions, but if you need help entering an order and stuff, you're supposed to call the well, Colorlink yeah, office. No, no, no.